Hello and welcome to today's challenge tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be learning about monochromatic artworks. What are they? Why would you want to create them? And of course, how they can turn you into a better artist. We'll start off by looking at what monochrome artworks are. Monochrome means one color, and by far the most popular monochrome artworks are graphite drawings. Chances are, when you started off with your artistic journey, you were given a pencil and an eraser and taught to draw. Graphite pencils aren't, however, the only way to create monochromatic artworks. We can create them in any medium. Monochrome also doesn't mean black and white. It means one color. You can pick any color under the sun to create a monochrome artwork. You could paint a landscape in all red, or draw a still life using only variations of blue. So you can just pick a colour and off you go, right? Well, yes and no. Of course, you can use any colour under the sun to create any painting you like. There's certainly nothing stopping you. But there is, however, one factor that you want to consider before you whip out your brushes and start painting. Each color conveys a different feeling or emotion. For example, red makes you think of heat and danger. Green, on the other hand, is a cool color, so it makes you think of grass, moss, and subsequently, cold feet. Can you see where I'm going with this? If you want a nice, peaceful artwork for your bedroom, red is probably not the color to go for. You need to consider what emotional effect the final artwork will have on the viewer. In this case, a pastel color would be a better choice for the bedroom. So here's something interesting. Do you say monochrome or monotone when referring to an artwork created using shades of a single color? I know that I often say monotone, and maybe you do too. The truth is, this is totally wrong. Think about it. Monotone means the same tonal value. No highlights, no shadows, and no midtones. If you were to use only one tonal value, you would have to use multiple colors of the same tonal value in order to create your artwork. This would leave you with an interesting, but very flat looking artwork. In fact, if you had to take a black and white photo of that artwork, you wouldn't see anything. It would appear as if there's nothing there. To illustrate that, let's look at my palette. In the top row, I've mixed up four colors, a light through to medium through to dark. Then I've adjusted their tonal values in the row below so that they are all the same tonal value by adding white to them. Now compare the colors on the color photograph and the black and white photograph. And notice how the equal tonal value colors on the black and white photo all appear the same. So the question is then, why would you want to paint or draw in monochrome when you have all the colors of the rainbow at your disposal? The answer is actually quite simple. For the effect, we have already touched on how color affects the emotions and mood of the person looking at your artwork. By the same token, you can convey your own emotions and mood in the artwork. If you want to paint something dull and dreary, only use greys or browns. There are also more mundane reasons you would want to work in monochrome. One of them being that you may want the colour in your artwork to match the colour scheme in your lounge. Another is to create a monochrome underpainting before adding colour to the artwork. Why would you want to do this? One of the biggest problems I find that new artists have is that they are scared of using contrast. They don't want to go too dark in case the artwork ends up looking dull and dead. Ironically, the opposite is true. You need dark shadows in your artwork to make your highlights appear bright. Working in monochrome forces you to ignore the color and to look at the underlying tonal values. The minute you do this, it becomes obvious that you need good contrasts, otherwise the artwork looks flat. The most common method of doing a monochrome underpainting 
is the classic grisaille layer used by the old masters. With this method, the entire scene is painted using only shades of neutral grey. Once dry, the colour is then added using transparent glazes. A different method is called Vidaccio. Here, yellow is added to the grey in order to get a greenish monochrome underpainting. This technique is very popular with portrait artists. Landscape artists often like to use burnt sienna to create a quick monochrome underpainting or sketch of the scene before moving over to painting it in colour. The advantage of working monochrome is that you are removing the whole colour aspect from the artwork. This not only gives a nice effect when the artwork is hanging on the wall, it also makes it so much easier for the beginner to master a medium. They are less overwhelmed when having to concentrate on the tonal values only. Then once they have a good grasp on the tonal values, adding colour is so much easier. And this is why most art tutors will start you off with pencil drawing before progressing you to painting. Now let's see what we can do to make our monochrome artwork stand out even more. One way of creating drama in your monochrome artworks is to add a spot of additional colour to the focal point. Doing this cements the viewer's eye on the focal point. A popular way of doing this is to create the whole artwork in grayscale and then add colour to the focal point. When not working in grayscale, you could also use the opposite colour in the focal area. This will make the focal area pop and appear very vibrant. You could also use a harmonious colour to not break the emotional effect of the artwork and give you more of a calming feel. When doing the actual painting of a monochrome artwork, I like to mix up five versions of the chosen colour. I start by mixing the base colour, the colour I want the overall artwork to have. Then I mix a highlight and shadow version of that colour using standard colour mixing rules. These colours are then placed on the palette, spread apart like this. Adjacent colours can then be mixed to create the midtones. This gives me a good variety of tonal values to choose from when painting. I will then block in these colours on the canvas at the places where their tonal values correspond. To merge adjacent colours together, I look to see how they meet. Do they meet in a sharp edge? Do they blend smoothly together or form a texture? Now, on to this lesson's challenge. Your challenge is to pick five objects, four that match and one that doesn't. For example, you could pick four objects from the kitchen and one from the workshop. Set these five objects up to form a simple still life. Then paint or draw all the matching objects as well as the background in monochrome. You choose which colour you would like it to be. Any colour doesn't matter. Finally, complete the art object by using a different colour. Instructions on where to post your artwork are in the description below. Good luck. I look forward to seeing your artwork.